Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today we are going to be looking at linear actuators and why my previous ones might have failed. This is a brand new one. And then I will be installing the new one on the turbo and putting the turbo back in the car. Now, as far as I can understand how using the Arduino has worked out so far, the linear actuator failing has been my primary failure, which probably means I'm just doing something wrong. And I'll elaborate on that in one second. To kick things off, I wanna just plug this into this, and this is just a power supply to me at this point. I'll be able to show you how this works or remind you how it works real quick, and then we'll jump into why I might be breaking it based on how it works. A brief reminder on how this works. I'm gonna leave it right there so I can hold the wires, but so this is ground over here, and over here is like 15 volts. So, okay, it extends going that way, and if you flip the leads, there you go, it goes the other way. That's how that works. Pretty simple, very simple, in fact. So, I forgot I needed extended. <laughs> so, I think the first issue that I realized just today is that I'm bad at holding wires. Okay, the first issue I realized, so this tube comes out, uh, it screws on. That white thing we're both looking at right there is actually what oscillates back and forth along a shaft inside. And by oscillates, I mean it is quite literally something that has a screw shape and it travels back and forth. So this tube here is our ticket to connecting things to that shaft that moves back and forth. But what I realized is when it's fully retracted, that silver center you can see there's the actual lead screw that makes this move back and forth. Its end is still right there. So now, with it fully retracted, if you screw this all the way in, it's basically flush with that. And even to the point where I realized the cap on these has, like, it's hollow on inside of these threads for that reason. So that when you put this all together, yeah, see how low that sits? It literally goes flush. So there's a hole inside of this original plastic piece because it needs to go around that shaft. So I think my first issue is previously, I wasn't leaving any room for that, which is, which is kind of ridiculous. What I was doing to connect the Arduino to the turbo was if this shaft goes in here, then I just got a bolt, turned it in a couple turns, and then cut the head off and welded on the actuator link right here. But I was using this as an adjustment, as in like more in is start sooner, more out is start later. But you can't be using it as an adjustment if it's gonna hit that metal thing down there. And so I think that's been causing probably all of my failures so far is the fact that I have a metal screw turned in the end and it's quite literally pushing the body of the internal, like the internal components of the actuator, trying to push it like out of the body uh, and they're separating and they're getting damaged. And so this time I need to be super careful. I think I'm gonna be very exact what length I make this and then double check when I'm setting everything up that when I contract it, it doesn't actually contract to the point where it's getting damaged. Uh, and I think between how long I cut this and how much I turn this in, I should be able to sort out a length where it'll work okay. So here is our culprit system. I kind of feel like the combination of lack of adequate vacuum from my vacuum pump and kind of the wrong amount of throw in the actuator together made this not work very well. But, while having it on the car, it made me appreciate that nothing is really a silver bullet. And I was actually pretty stoked on my Arduino setup, uh, especially because me and Dave spent so much time working on it. So while I think the GoVast bits could work eventually and that it could be vacuum controlled, I think in the interest of what I want to do more and what I want to spend my time and money on, it's not having mechanical boost control, it's definitely having my Arduino computer do things. So in light of that, this shit's coming off. 
Fortunately, I like basically didn't do anything to add that, so that's easy. So the way I'm thinking about this is, let's orient you. Here's the actuator, it's mounted softly. This is how much throw the vein control has. And if my most important problem is that as I turn this screw in too much, and it hits the internals and it breaks, then I need it to be, I just need to check that it has enough throw to be, be as long as it can be when this is like a couple turns in. Ultimately what I'm working towards here is I need to cut this ring back off so I can reuse it and attach it to this bolt instead of the head. But what I'm getting to is it seems like if I leave this full length and this full length, then I'll turn the bolt in so far that I might damage it, which is probably what I did last time. So I need to trim the bolt a little bit short, just a little, not too much, so that we're pretty much exactly where we wanna be, like veins you know, ever so slightly open without any adjustment, and then I have more adjustment to open them if I need it without damaging anything. So next steps is to cut this off, cut this off, Weld some junk. So I have the actuator hooked up and I have it in eight or nine turns, right? Half turns, excuse me. Uh, we'll go with four full turns right now is where it's at. It's all the way extended. I think there's plenty of room for this to not hit when it gets closed, but I'm not gonna contract the actuator as far as it can go because it'll stop when it hits this thing's limit. Uh, and this is also just kind of a refresh on how this system works. Just like that. Okay, so right there is its short length with everything together. And then I guess what I wanna see is how many more how many total turns can I turn it in before it hits? So I'm gonna start from scratch here. We were in eight, which was like, that's like kind of the minimum. So one half, one, uh, I'm just gonna do half turns, it's too hard to count. So at like 14, I think we're there, but we might not even be there, honestly. I think the threads just get caught. Okay, so perfect. Uh, when it's as, closed as it can be, as screwed in as the screw can be screwed in, uh, it still won't hit when the veins are fully open, which is really what we're checking for. Quick refresher, what operation looks like. Uh, this is with it more or less fully in there. So that's opening, that's closing, and this isn't even, I don't even think, well, that's close to 12 volts, but probably not quite. So it's pretty quick. There you go, that's how fast it is. The other problem I was trying to solve too, um, I'm gonna mention it before I put it back in the car, was that I had the wires pull out of the circuit board. So now I have this zip tie right here, which ties the wires to the frame very tightly. So no matter what you do, you're not gonna put a bunch of stress on these two. If they break off now, that's it's kind of their own fault. Okay, and it's all back in there. I'm getting really fast at taking the turbo in and out. And here you go. See my wires are stress relieved and have lots of play in them. Well, lots of slack, enough slack. Everything's connected, sensors are still here. And then the other thing I realized too is that my display was bugging out, which I realized is a separate issue from the fact that it wasn't actuating because I tested that we have power going to there and we do and it works. So that's good and that's its own thing but my display would bug out and I started just tapping wires on the breadboard. So I replaced all the loose wires that were creating the screen bug in the breadboard to different holes that are tighter. So I think that's fixed too. And for now the go fast bits is gonna go back where it came from. I think it was cool to try it to see that there really are no silver bullets, at least not with the setup I'm running. You know, it takes time to develop a good working product. And I think I got really impatient with the Arduino which is kind of lesson learned. Uh, that's not to say that the Go Fast Bits isn't for someone else. I think this is a pretty cool little valve assembly and it probably works really well if you have any more of a stock setup than I do. And kind of with that, it's not really worth 
me putting time and money into making this work when I know my Arduino worked and I just had to work a few kinks out. So without further ado, this is going back to the internet and we're going for a test drive. Going for a little test drive. We're just gonna make sure it works. I'm gonna start with we're gonna go lower, uh, that's drive pressure. All right, we're gonna go 18 drive pressure and 15 boost with a minimum of seven drive pressure. We're checking that it works. You can see we're coming up to about seven and it's holding, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, already it just works way better than the alternative does. So the nice thing I'm noticing is that like you really don't even, I'm not even using all the gas I have to give it half the time. It's just banking boost super nicely. Third gear, five PSI of boost, 15 PSI of back pressure. 10 PSI boost, 15 PSI, 20 PSI. Oh yeah, that thing works good. <laughs> oh, it's fun. The Arduino system kicks ass. The Go Fast Bits has nothing on my Arduino setup. Absolutely nothing. You know, it holds pressures where they're supposed to be, which is freaking awesome. Uh, it's easily adjustable. It tells you what it's doing. And the screen still bugs out a bit, which is 100% the fact that I need to solder all of this instead of having it in a breadboard. But I mean, the turbo is responding beautifully, so it's good to sort through the things that kind of broke, and now I know if it's not responding, it's not because the screen is glitching out. That just, like, the veins still actually correctly, even if the screen is bugging out. The screen is like the lowest priority. So it's just good to know that if I'm having an actuation problem, it's just the fact that my linear actuator died and not that, you know, the Arduino is really messing anything up. And it seems like it works well enough too that I don't really need to like wait for the ALH to use it. At any rate, this was a highly successful endeavor. It was good to go to the Go Fast Bits, if for no other reason to motivate myself to fix the Arduino setup. And the Arduino setup kicks ass, so it's just a matter of refining it, which we can do in time. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you feel like it, but I'm pretty much just gonna be working on this. And now that this is working and I kind of understand 
the nature of how it breaks a bit better, then I think it's time to really like move forward on the ALH build and try to put it in the car sooner than later. Rabbit is back!